The number one cause of failure in the world is the fear of failure. Fear stops more dreams from coming true than anything else. The fear of failure is the number one cause of failure. To take the jump is hard, because you got to take a chance. But folks, you get one time round the track in life. You don't get to go round twice. You go round once. Here's the deal. If you stay safely planted where you are and you never jump, you never take a chance to go see what God really has for you. You're not going to ever live. You're going to merely exist. You're going to live with if I had only. You're going to live with the fact that you're going to see other people living their best life. You're going to have to live with the fact that there are people's dreams coming true every day with the exception of yours. Now, if you can rationalize that out and live with that, I applaud you. I could not live with the fact that I thought there was a better life for me, but I was afraid to take it. See, let me put it to you this way. Okay, so you're afraid to go after your dreams. Because why? It's hard. But can I tell you something? It's hard to be successful, but it's hard not to be successful. It's hard, but it's hard with options. What you don't want to do is live your life without options, and not being successful kills all options. You have to lose your fear. The first way to get focus is to find purpose. The way to find purpose is you must identify what it is that you have to be purposeful in. When you are struggling with what to do, who you are, what's your next move, you are in an identity crisis. You are struggling with just who you are, See, you have not discovered who you are. You have to discover who you are in order to move you forward. If no one ever gave you the directions, let me tell you something. When you get up and you get up in the morning, you go get in the car or you walk out your door, you have a destination in mind. If you go outside with no destination, what do you do? You just, you wander around. Once you don't have a destination, you are going to wander around. You cannot get in your car without a destination. Where, did you, where do you drive? So you are in an identity crisis, the same thing I was in. So you have to find your purpose. So let me help you with this. If you are in this situation, the solution is the first thing. You have to do the thing that God gave you. You just have to identify your gift. That's the first thing. Until you do that, you can forget it. You'll never find your purpose. You'll never know your mission. You'll never know the reason. So I think we're in an identity crisis. I think you have to identify who you are and what your real gift is and pursue the gift. The Bible says your gift will make room for you, put you in the presence of great men. That's what your gift do, that's God. That ain't Steve. I'm telling you what God said. You ain't gotta believe me, it's in your Bible. I've identified my gift. I'm in the joke telling business. Your gift is like a tree trunk. Your gift is the trunk of a tree. On a tree, it has many branches. Now, because my gift is comedy, that's my tree trunk. That's what I was made for, the gift. Two things, your career is what you paid for. Your calling is what you made for. So God took this tree trunk and made a lot of branches. You know what you should do? Every time you get a chance to experience first class, you should do it because it plants a seed. It's like the next time you buy an airplane ticket, just ask for an upgrade. Pay a little extra money, fly first class. What it does is it conditions your mind. Once you get in first class and you see how wide the seats are, and you find, you find out why they shut that curtain, see, because they shut that curtain because they can't let you see what the going on up there. They passing out hot nuts. Everybody get a washcloth. They got a menu. You get to decide what you want. All the drinks is free. Once you sit in first class one time, the next time you get on the plane, it's very difficult to walk past them seats. And then your mind starts thinking of ways to get back to first class. And guess what? That's what you start attracting to your life. And you start behaving and producing stuff to get you back into first class. That's how you move up. You just take, like, like buy you one really expensive outfit. Just see how it fits. That shit is high for a reason. Don't think they down there just putting prices on Buy a really expensive pair of shoes, lady. Buy a really expensive purse one time. Just go on down there, buy the real Louis Vuitton that ain't ever on sale. Louis Vuitton don't even have sales. Just get you one. When you carry it, it changes your life. It will then cause your mind to subconsciously produce thoughts to get another one. 
And next thing you know, you attract the thing you need to produce the outcome that you want. Life is all about the law of attraction. That's how you do it. Yeah. Quitting guarantees the failure. Once you quit, it rules out any chance of succeeding. The mere waking up every day, putting the next foot in front of the next foot, at least keeps you in the game. And if God is waking you up continually every morning, once God wakes you up, that's a sign from God that he ain't through with you yet, that he has something more for you in store that he hasn't given to you yet. That's why you wake up every day. All you got to do is understand that because look at this. The moment God is done, when you served your purpose here, you won't wake up. But if you keep waking up, don't you understand that there's a higher purpose? Your goal in life is just to get into a relationship with God where you can understand the purpose. And it ain't got to match nobody else's. You know, quit trying to be saved like everybody else. You got to get saved for yourself. You got a diploma. Diplomas are pieces of paper that sit on walls. After you get a diploma, real life starts. You gotta chase your dreams, man. If it ain't what you're dreaming of doing, plus that paper's kind of deceptive anyway. You know, I always thought it was messed up that you ask a kid at 18 year old to declare what he wants to be for the rest of his life. Then he gets a major and he works his ass off for four years and he gets a degree and he, he didn't even know who he was when he answered that question. Most people I know don't even work in their degree because they discover something else. I say chase your dreams, man. Do that thing, man, that keeps you up at night. That thing that bothers you, man, that makes you trip. You can't quit thinking about it. You wake up in the middle of the night, you got a new idea. That's what you got to chase. Because anything else, it's going to disappoint you. You're going to forever be sad, man. If you don't chase that dream, you're going to forever be miserable, man. Bishop Jakes was talking one day on a podcast. I heard him talking. He said, I would hate to die and never do the thing I was born to do. That's a sad thing, man, that people like, they never chase because you got jobs and stuff and you listening to other people, I would, man, if I hadn't chased my dream, I wouldn't be here. If I listened to my mother and father, I'd have been a construction worker, just like my brothers. You got the diploma, it signifies that you have the ability to complete a task very well. And there's some, you know, if you want to be a doctor, lawyer, you got to get a degree, come on now. But what if, what if you made that decision when you was 18, you want to be something else? You know, you want to go be a writer, go be a writer, I mean, you know. I could tell you, that's a sad way to make a living that's something you don't enjoy doing. You're gonna do that till you're 65, then you're gonna retire, then they're gonna give you a third of what you can't live on anyway. That's the plan. They'll give you a gold watch, a turkey, and one third of what you're having a hard time living on now. I would go chase that dream, see what God got for me. You know, sometimes, man, it's good to hear from somebody that you might think is successful that can share a piece of information because a lot of people, that's really all that's missing from a person going from this level to the next level. It's just a piece of information. It's not money, it's information because being successful is just knowing the principles of success. Like if you understood a very simple principle, the principle of gratitude, do you understand that if you were to wake up every day and go down the list of things and just tell God what you're grateful for. Don't wake up a single day without going down the list of things you're grateful for. It could be something minute. You know, waking up, you should really thank him every day because I don't know if you notice or not, you really don't have the ability to wake yourself up. You really don't. A lot of alarm clocks go off and people don't answer the bell. Your alarm clock can go off, but God has to shake you to wake you so you hear them. So if you wake up every day and you go down the list of things that you're grateful for, what God does in return is he gives you more things to be grateful for because he's a very wise and generous God, right? If you're not grateful for the things I've given you and you have no gratitude for it, and that seems to be really mundane to you, it's burdensome, why would I overload you with some more stuff that you ain't grateful for? See. Gratitude, man, people don't understand how important that little thing is. Even if you don't have a plan, even if you don't know what your next move is, if you just woke up every day and just thanked him for just all the things you can go down, the next day, the very next day, I promise you that he'll give you more to be grateful for. You'll be stunned how that, just change that one little thing. Show gratitude and then watch him give you a whole lot more stuff to be grateful for.